I don't mean to startle anybody, but we have a new intro. A few months ago, I replaced my computer, an i7-7700K paired with the GTX 1070 that I called the Magnum Opus, with this monstrosity behind me. An R9 3900X paired with an RTX 2080 Ti that I call Lightbringer. Today, we're going to be benchmarking the two and comparing their performance. The question you're probably having is, why compare the two? Because the newer one will obviously win. The reason we're comparing them is because there's three things we can learn. The first is the kind of performance uplift that the newer hardware has, which is always good, so I know what I spent my money on. The other lesson is how does the i7-7700K and the 1070 run with some newer popular titles and some older popular titles and how the newer hardware handles them as well. And from that we can kind of extrapolate what these new graphics cards that are coming out here in a couple weeks will operate like. In this test, the i7-7700K actually gets a massive boost because it is running at five gigahertz. The reason, I just always overclock my old processor to five gigahertz. Let's start with our synthetic benchmarks. In 3D Firestrike Ultra, the i7-1070 combo got a score of 4,367, and the Ryzen 9 2080Ti combo got a score of 8080. In regular Firestrike, the i7 got 15,034, and the R9 got 26,119. In both cases, the newer hardware is 1.8 times faster. Our Cinebench score is interesting. As we can see in the all-core CPU test, the newer hardware is 2.6 times faster, but on the single-core test, they're practically neck and neck. Now we get into our game benchmarks, starting with Deus Ex Mankind Divided at 1080 resolution. And what we find is some kind of bottleneck. You'll notice that at all three quality settings, our max frame rate is 64.7, and at very high and high, our average FPS is 59.8. What we notice for the Ryzen 9 and RTX 2080 Ti is not only do our results scale like we'd expect, but average FPS more than doubles. At 1440, our Deus Ex results are scaling for the i7 system, and our R9 is holding a similar performance lead over it. At 4K, our i7 results are what I'd consider unplayable, while we stay near just under 60 FPS average for the RTX 2080 Ti. Far Cry 5 at 1080 gives us odd results, with the new hardware outperforming the i7 system, but not to the degree you'd expect. Things get really weird in the 1440 benchmarks, where the Ryzen 9 system's benchmarks barely change at all from 1080. It's within margin of error, while the numbers for the i7 system decrease by 25%. At 4K, we get over 30 FPS average for the i7 at ultra and very high and the Ryzen 9 system gets comfortably over 60 FPS in both settings. Nice. For the CPU benchmark slash epileptic seizure induction machine Ashes of the Singularity, the Ryzen 9 system's average FPS is over twice that of the i7 system at all three quality presets tested. Assassin's Creed Odyssey gives us odd results on the i7 machine. Both the 1080 and 1440 results have virtually identical average and minimum frame rates. The other noteworthy result is in 4K, where the Ryzen 9 3900X and RTX 2080 Ti combo cannot hold a 60 FPS average. What can we extrapolate from these results if we want to build or upgrade a gaming computer? The first is games are only going to get more demanding from now on, to the point I'd say if you want to play AAA titles at 1080 on Ultra at 60 FPS after the PS5 and Xbox, whatever they're calling it, this week drops. You're going to need something beefier than a GTX 1070. Also, the upcoming RTX 3070 will not be a good card for you if your goal is to play 4K Ultra at 60 FPS. In addition to not being able to hold that frame rate in a lot of titles, the RTX 2080 Ti has 11 gigabytes of VRAM versus the 3070's 8 gigabytes. And Deus Ex Mankind Divided? Microsoft Flight Simulator 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Horizon Zero Dawn all routinely use over 8GB of VRAM, running at 4K Ultra settings. So, based on what we know, a little under two weeks from RTX 3080 launch, if you're looking to upgrade and have a 1440 monitor, the RTX 2080 Ti or RTX 3070 would be a good fit for you. If you want good 4K performance or absurdly high refresh rate gaming at 1440, the RTX 3080 is looking like the obvious choice of NVIDIA's benchmarks can be believed. If you have a 1080 monitor and you're happy with it, and want to game at 60 FPS Ultra settings, you don't need overkill. A 1070 will work just fine for existing titles, but you might want to consider a 1080, 2070, or 1080 Ti for the future. As for the CPUs, the i7-7700K has nearly identical performance to AMD's budget Ryzen 3 3100 that was released for $100 earlier this year, and that level of performance is great for 1080 gaming. You'll want to get something with a little more oomph like a Ryzen 5 or Intel i5 processor for gaming at higher resolutions though. Conversely, I'm not sitting here trying to shame you into an upgrade you don't want or can't pull off. A few years back, I was working a terrible job and was running Fallout 4 on an i3-2120 with a GTX 750Ti. As for what we learned comparing these two computers, the leap in performance we've seen in the past three years between what an i7-7700K with a GTX 2070 can do versus the Ryzen 9 3900X with an RTX 2080 Ti is the biggest leap in computational power I've seen since the mid-90s, when 486s were getting replaced by Pentiums. Intel's 2010s market dominance led them to stagnate their products because they knew so long as they released four cores with eight threads with a year-over-year -year performance increase of 8% as their flagship product, they would keep raking in the cash. While I enjoy seeing them get a comeuppance from Ryzen, if AMD continues to outpace Intel and Intel keeps floundering, AMD will most likely begin acting just like Intel did. Ideally, I'd like to see more parity between the processors offered by both companies, because fanboyism divides consumers, corporate competition is good for consumers. And that's it for today, and as always, thank you for joining us on The Test Bench. Like this video and subscribe to the Test Bench. Feel free to join us on Facebook. Back us on Patreon if you want to help us show you more cool stuff. And follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check out our other videos.